Brad, John, and Justin have arrived. I look okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the regular meeting of the Berlin Select Board for February 1st, 2021 to order. Um, additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, Brad, you'll see on the 7.15 um, time slot there, uh, Phil Gentili has asked to uh, put his his reappointment to the Berlin Conservation Commission on hold to a later date. Okay. Um, seeing no other changes, uh, public comment. Yeah, I have one. Go ahead, Peter. I'm Peter Schober. Um, I live on Brookfield Road. And along with Susan Rich, uh, we own the 25 acre Chapman Churchill woodlot on Irish Hill, adjoining the townland on two sides and adjoining the Rich Farm on the third side and the Schober Irish Hill Farm on the fourth side. So that's where our interest is and our immediate concern, uh, should the town grant a permit for VAST, that it be clearly written in writing and to include signage uh, not to direct uh, vast snowmobiles onto adjoining land. Um, unfortunately, there are maps in circulation today of Irish Hill, including some USGS topo maps that indicate trails by a dotted red line over most of the townland and onto the Chapman Churchill lot, which has no public trails, and on down onto the rich property down to Brookfield Road. So those maps would have to be used very carefully to instruct VAST or anyone else where they can go and where they shouldn't go. Um, I just mentioned that as, a, as an FYI because those maps can be misleading. Um, I think there are broader concerns, safety concerns, should uh, a, a snowmobile permit be issued uh, both at Brookfield Road, where what I call the Lee and Stewart Road, it's the east end of Darling Hill Trail, adjoins Brookfield Road, and where the uh, small parking area is. That area can get congested very quickly. There's a blind hill there, and if any additional parking were permitted, especially in the wintertime when the road's narrow, uh, it could cause a really serious um, safety issue at that point. The other concern that I would have uh, is a more general concern of uh, having pedestrians, snowmobile, I'm sorry, snowshoers and cross-country skiers on the same trail with snow machines um, on some of the very steep, narrow sections of the trail, the uh, tower trail, if that's if that's the intent, the tower trail is, of course, the steepest and the narrowest. Um, I wanted to note that the, um, the Berlin advisory survey, uh, I think fairly clearly indicated that the voters were not in favor of snowmobiles on town land. And I wonder how much weight the select board uh, puts in that survey. And it would be my suggestion um, that perhaps this issue be tabled until more investigation can be done, the issues itemized and hopefully resolved with VAST to everyone's satisfaction um, in preparation for next year. I don't think that trail meets any of the um, Vermont town forest trail specs or 
probably vast specs, um, but that's an issue that hasn't been determined and I think should be on that list. Thank you for your time. Sure thing, Peter. Any other comments? I, ju I just want to address uh, Peter's, one of Peter's concerns. Um, and, and Peter, we've been having these discussions for a couple of months now, and I think everything that you've mentioned um, has, has certainly come up and is needs to be weighed and needs to be worked on throughout the course of the next however many months before the next vast season, if the board chooses to move forward. Um, so, so everyone's a phone. The reason I put the action item or requested the action item be on there tonight um, or possible action was because after the public hearing, um, I couldn't figure exactly who had the ball and what the next steps were. So my intent of the p possible action was to talk about the um, public hearing with the select board and depending on how the board felt to offer a uh, motion to have the conservation committee work with VAST to mitigate uh, some of the very concerns that you brought up, whether it be the steep part, which I think is an issue, um, the uh, multiple you know, types of use of the trail, um, and it'll give the select board a little bit of time to work on the, the road issue and try to mitigate that issue as well. It was not to uh, push a snow machine trail through this, this season. It was more of trying to figure out who had the ball and make sure we're all on the same page. So with that, I'll be quiet. And I'd can also I, like to can apologize. Can I respond to that? Sure. Sure. Um, thank you, Brett. I, I, um, I think that would be an appropriate scenario for the Berlin Conservation Commission to address with VAST as the applicant. Um, my question would become, what happens if there are issues that appear to be unresolvable? Uh, do, you have, do you have an example? Well, yes, I think the steepness would be one of those. I think that's Mother Nature. That's not about to change. They couldn't change that with bulldozers and blasting when they put the, when the new tower in there. So, um, you, know, I, you know, I have to say that I'm personally aware that snowmobiles can travel that trail. Not recently, but um, but uh vast tends to want to groom their trails i'm not sure that they would be able to groom those trails and they tend to, to travel in groups and that of course presents more issue with um town folks that are using the trail for other purposes so i just think you know it's possible uh that uh, they could come to an impasse and then do they return to the select board and say, what do we do now? It sounds, Peter, I'd like to personally apologize for not responding to your email. I, I feel like you sent one. I, I do apologize for that. <laughs> um, I think that what John's, the point of that, the action item on the agenda is to actually get into that type of a discussion and figure out what we don't, what we don't have in place at this particular moment is an actual plan of action should something other than snowmobiles arise or another outdoor recreation. Um, and certainly, uh, depending on where you go, you know, sometimes you can coexist, sometimes you can't probably on some of these trails. I completely understand that. So I think what, what the town needs to do moving forward is have a strategy and a plan in place on so that when, when this is all the dust settles, however this may turn out, um, that the next thing that moves forward can move forward in a, a productive, smooth manner where everybody knows the process and procedure. I, I think that's, that's the biggest thing behind this as well. Thank you, Justin. And a plan, a plan is, is a good thing. Yeah. Any other comments? I have uh, a comment. Hurley. Yes. Um, I understand uh, all of the uh, comments that were that were made. 
But I'd like to bring up something that is less quantifiable, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, and I think a lot of other people, um, it is it is a real concern. And that is the, um, the idea of, or the product of noise that the snowmobiles make. Uh, the proposed trail would be above us. I live on the end of Brookfield Road. We, my wife and I have property on both sides of the road. And it is certainly possible that we would be affected by noise that the snowmobiles make. And they can, especially in large groups that are constant, um, it can be an incredibly annoying thing. I'm even more concerned that uh, although I, I understand the vast organization and its rules and regulations, but very often people take, uh, they veer off of those trails uh, just to go elsewhere. Um, it'd be very difficult to police and um, the most likely place they would end up is right on our property or very close to it. So that noise, um, I don't know how you guys address that, but it is a real concern of myself and my wife. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Burley. Any other public comment? Uh, yes, Ms. Drysdale. You're on mute. There. There you are. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I wrote sort of a letter this afternoon that I'd like to read. I've lived on the south end of Berlin Pond for 41 years, and I enjoy walking the Darling Road Trail and the mountain bike trails with my dog several times monthly. I'm also an avid cross-country skier and have shared snowmobile trails with riders since before VAST existed all over central Vermont, occasionally making a donation to a local VAST group as a courteous gesture. As has been noted, riders almost always slow down appropriately when we meet and give a friendly wave. It is tempting for me to support the VAST proposal as I'd love to spot a car and ski from Northfield to Darling Road and then across the road, to, across the pond to home. But after mulling about this for the past few weeks, I've decided to register my opposition to the proposal and to urge the select board at least to look for, further into the issues brought up by the Conservation Committee and other Berlin citizens. Three of these in particular can, um, are a particular concern to me as a frequent user of the area. One, wetlands conservation. There are three places on the Darling Road and the Tower Trail that are very wet much of the year with swampy areas on both sides of the road. Two, steepness and safety. The Tower Trail is really very steep and rocked for long periods. I'm familiar with the other vast trail to Northfield from the Berlin Pond Road near exit five which has steep spots, but this is worse. I'm also very concerned about snow machines using black and brookfield roads on a section that's narrow, steep, and dangerously blind, and which frequently is used by walkers, runners, and bikers, even in the winter. And three, popularity. Since the pandemic, these trails have been discovered by many more people, singly and in groups, searching to get outside and exercise safely in peace and quiet. Many are accompanied by dogs who are rarely leashed and joyfully romp ahead of their family. I expect that even when the pandemic is over, this can, area will continue to be a winter haven for Central Vermont walkers and skiers. I fear that if this trail is open to vast, it will be very popular with snowmobilers as the shortcut to the Northfield area. There's a non motorized folks to be seriously compromised by frequent encounters with snowmobilers, even ones. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any can other you comments? Hear me? Brad, can you hear me? 
Brad? Yeah. I have a uh, Galaxy Tab 2019 have raised their hand. Uh, yes, this is Shea Miller. Um, I live on Black Road, and I just would like to voice my opposition to the plan um, to allow snowmobiles. Um, I have concerns about having snowmobiles on the roads and trails. Um, very much uh, a lot of the users there um, you know, are walking with small children and pets, and um, these higher impact uses are definitely going to negatively impact these users. Um, I also have concerns about the environmental impact and the fact that this plan seems to be moving forward without um, really a lot of assessment about the negatives it's going to have. And um, I do have concerns about the noise, uh, even uh, under the current situation, just where the vast trails are on my end of the pond, I already can hear the uh, snowmobiles. So I do have concerns about them being able to have access uh, on the roads as well. And that's the uh, end of my comment. Okay, thank you. Brad, there's Theron Lay Sleeper has a hand raised. Hi, everybody. Hey. Uh, my name is Theron. So my, uh, my understanding is that the town forest is, or was initially designated as a, a place that was meant for non-motorized recreation, sort of a natural <clears throat> um, habitat conservation and um, and also a sort of a, a, a resource for the town um, as as such uh, and I, I may be I may be mistaken but that's that's what I understood from the, the last discussion um, <clears throat> when we when we talked about the the proposal from vast last time and uh, <clears throat> I think that that's that's a, a very valuable thing to have in town that is available for everybody to use as a as a space where there's quiet, there's fresh air, there's um, habitats for animals, and and there's you know it's a place also where people can walk their dogs and recreate. <clears throat> and my understanding is also that there are existing vast trails that go between Barry and Berlin and Northfield, um, a little bit further to the east, it looks like, the southeast. <clears throat> and so factoring that in, it seems like this, this would be a, a nice shortcut for the snowmobilers. It would make a loop. Um, but there, there are lots of other places where snowmobilers can travel and, and get to where they are interested in getting to. Um, but I think it would be it would be a, a greater negative impact for the other folks that wanted to use this this land for recreation and non motorized recreation than it um, you know, and it you know it it would be a benefit for the vast trail but it would also negatively affect all of these people who are interested in keeping it as a as a designated quiet and natural area. I'd like. Theron, I just want to chime in there and clarify a couple items for you. Yeah, sure. Uh, with this land, from the research I've done, just so you're aware, um, we the town acquired the land in, uh, it was the 28th of December, 2000. And we actually received the, the deed from the Vermont River Conservancy. Um, and in there, I, I researched it for, oh, hold on, the dogs are barking, sorry. Um, I researched it for restricted uses and areas um, that it can be utilized and, and in, under the restricted use uh, from day one snowmobiles have always been um, if we read it right here it just says you know number seven there shall be no operation of motorized vehicles on the protected properties except for uses specifically reserved section three below such as wildlife forest management trail grooming maintenance handicap access uh, and for safety and emergency purposes, snowmobiling may also be permitted. In. So, says specifically in the deed. So, I just wanted to give you that clarification. That's all. I just want to throw that out there so everyone. But we didn't hear it. Sorry about that. I, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Perfect. 
but back when we bought the property in 2000, um, with the deed that I researched, basically the shortest snowmobiles were permitted through the Vermont River Conservancy when the property was bought. So I just I know that was some of the question that was out there is if we were going against the original purchase, the deed, things like that in consideration of this. Um, so I wanted to do my due diligence and, and research it and specifically emergency purposes. Justin, Justin, as soon as you stop looking at the camera, we can't hear you anymore. Sorry. It's okay. Yeah. The, I bet, guess I better get another camera if we're going to continue to do it this way. The, uh, the deed allows for snowmobile travel. That's what it boils down to. When we purchased the property in 2000 from the Vermont River Conservancy, and I just wanted to make sure that it did or it didn't and, and go from there. I just wanted to share that. Okay, thank you. Um, Brad, Ron Lyon has his hand up. Uh, okay, Ron. We lost him. Wendelin? I just want to clarify about the easement, and I can provide it for anybody who wants to see it. Our current easement is with Vermont Land Trust, and it does allow for snowmobiling provided um, that we can show that it meets with the primary reasons for having the easement, which are conservation of the property. And the second one is um, for it to be compatible with non-motorized use. So we have to ensure that those two things happen. And if we can ensure that, then we can allow snowmobiles. Um, and if anybody wants to see the current easement that we have, I'd be glad to share that with people. Okay, Ron. Thank you. I think I'm back. Oh. <laughs> oh. Here we go. Am I back on? You're yes, back Ron. on. Okay, sorry. It's not the first time I screwed up the computer. <laughs> it's in the wrong buttons. Uh, well, thanks for inviting us all tonight. I had a some comments and one of the things that I guess I feel is that there's a path forward on this and I think that's what John is saying. The path forward to me is uh, we've got a very important resource uh, for the town and for the people in the town. It um, I think it's really just very important to take the time to understand it and it's necessary to really understand the proposal and the impacts and before we approve it. I think any study, any motion or any movement would have should uh, take into account that it would be subject to and after review of many different aspects of the process. Uh, some of the things that I think that will result in is a much better outcome for the town and all the users, uh, residents and all. Some of my concerns certainly would be that all the environmental issues, this was one of the well, the key, I guess the key in the whole town plan, the key conservation uh, area. And it does have a lot of, of um, habitat and steep slopes and erosion issues. Some of the things that I think I'd like to recommend the town look at closely is, you know, what is the use, defining that use? Uh, what are the hours? What's the speed? What's the location of what we're putting in? Uh, the shared use, how do you, can we make it acceptable to those people now that uh, many, many residents have enjoy it? And can, through this study, come up with this program that says, yes, we can do it, or no, we can't do it. And then uh, address some of those issues. I think noise is a concern just because of the valley and We've experienced the same things with snowmobiles, just to echo uh, wetlands and erosion control and uh, vegetation and habitat, all those things that are conservation related. Uh, I think if we look at the parking and the roadways, uh, we've had some residents that have expressed uh, 
interest in all those things, and I think it's important that we look at them uh, before a decision is made and put that process into place. And we've got a good conservation commission. We've got really sharp people in the town, uh, good planning commission, good select board. And really look at those uh, aspects of a proposal prior to making a decision and do a real, real honest uh, public input, public participation process to say, what do we want to do as a town? So some of those kind of a long way of saying we really need to look at all those aspects. Uh, there's no rush. It's like, uh, you know, I think our planning commission, the select board went through some really good reviews of the town center over a period of years. This won't take that, but it should take the same consideration as far as doing a good job of making decisions. So I'd, I'd say we should not we should do the study. We should have the conservation people involved, Vermont Land Trust involved, the, uh, certainly the snowmobilers involved. Vast is a great organization. And, uh, so there's lots of ways within the next year you could come up with some really good decisions and good firm decision that you know, maybe I'll come up with some ways to mitigate things that'll, that'll keep problems from occurring uh, out of that study. So so that uh, is kind of what I was looking at. And I think John's heading in that direction. A path forward is good. And all these comments, I'm just pleased with the comments. And I walk that trail fairly often when in summer with and without dogs. And, it's just what a resource for the town at this point. So, so just uh, doing a really good heads up job. So we get it right. I think is important. So, thank, thank you. Thank you, Ron. Uh, Brad Trevor Whipple has his hand raised. Uh, let's see, here. Trevor. Good. Good evening, folks. And uh, I, I don't want to be redundant to, to what I said during the last meeting, but just want to make sure that it's uh, on. I guess in the record. Um, uh, I would be opposed, uh, would ask that before any decisions are made, uh, that there be, uh, you know, a thorough assessment of, uh, we're talking shared use, as I mentioned before, not just of the path, so shared between foot and walkers and hikers, but also the shared road. Um, and would also ask, and uh, I, I have not asked this question internally, I don't want to have any conflicts, but ask, uh, does this have any bearing on the liability to residents as well? If we're starting to uh, have this real blend of uses on uh, paths in the woods that now will potentially change use as well as uh, a town highway. Uh, also looking at uh, what could the potential impact be uh, to the town budget? Uh, is this gonna require any additional uh, enforcement, any additional response by the police department uh, any additional response by our uh, rescue folks. Uh, we do know that uh, we read regularly about uh, snow machine accidents, just like we do car accidents. So uh, would just ask uh, very much in favor of a lot of what I've heard this evening. And I was on the phone earlier before I, I came in by a computer, um, but would ask for a thorough assessment uh, by the board as to what the risk, the potential cost is, and, and what's the gain? This is a, you know, an assessment of uh, what's the cost versus what's the gain to the, to the taxpayers in, in particular. Uh, this is town land um, and what's going to be of best, best benefit for uh, everybody in Berlin. So uh, I just I thank you for uh, putting so much into this and, and to having the opportunity for the town to weigh in and uh, just ask that we, we really think about all the different angles here. Thank you, Trey. Brad, I have an L.L. L. Miller raise their hand. Okay, Mr. Miller, or L.L. L. Miller. <laughs> Hi, this is Lindsay Oops. Miller, uh, Berlin resident. Um, I had hopped on the, the last call, that the last discussion we had about this, but I, I wanted to join here and also, um, you know, make note of my opposition to this plan. Um, I think aside from just the long-term impact that, putting in a new road at a high elevation through sensitive habitat has, um, I think ultimately there is a way that we could have vast trails and snowmobile use in the area. Uh, you know, I, I think there's just uh, using a little bit more thought and maybe being a little more mindful about it. 
Um, maybe the, the path can be routed elsewhere, maybe through an existing road or an existing, you know, section of different vast trail. Um, I, I guess my big concern here is just, you know, the knee jerk reaction to cut in and, and put in a new road. Um, so um, again, just uh, wanted to, to throw my name in as uh, opposing this idea as it currently stands. Thank you. Lindsay, I'm, I'm not sure that this is a knee jerk reaction. We've been, this is the fifth full month that we've discussed this. Well, we're going into the sixth month. We haven't made any decisions. We're still collecting public input. So, um, uh, you know, w when the survey was put out, only 59 people total responded and just barely over half said no. So we're talking about 20, 29 or 30 people saying no total. And a lot of them are on the call tonight. And we certainly, you know, want to address a lot of those issues. A lot of them we have in previous meetings. And Vastus come in and talked about what we're going to do around, you know, where people would park and the signage and things like that. And we're happy to keep listening and, and to make sure people get their answers and feel comfortable. But this is certainly isn't a knee jerk reaction. Um, Lorena Sutter. This is Rob Griffin Suter, at, uh, also Berlin resident. Just reiterating my opposition as expressed in the last public hearing, um, in particular because of being such frequent users of the trail in all seasons of the year, including winter, and, and a strong sense that, that in this case, um, the benefit to vast of being able to use that trail does not outweigh the disadvantage to all of us who use it for non-motorized purposes. So it would urge that that very strong consideration on our part be taken seriously by the board. Thank you. Uh, any other comments on uh, for public comment? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to Treasurer's Report. Diane? Hi, okay. Uh, the first thing I have is the contractor's application for payment. I put that on the desk and I've sent it to all of the select board members. Uh, this would be the seventh payment and I would like to get it approved and then have the chair sign it is for 252,950.58 and is for Dubois construction for the Payne Turnpike North wastewater improvement. Hear a motion. I'll make a motion. Make a motion to approve uh, the, you said seventh payment, Diane? Yes, payment number seven, yep. Payment number seven to Du Bois Construction. For two, yep, for 252, 950, 58. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Brad, Brad, do we have, have a quorum here? Is it just, well, I guess we would if you're on two. Who else is yeah. on from the select board? Um, well, well, Flo's in here somewhere. Flo. Oh. Flo? Yes, hello. I would have made the motion, but my husband was on the phone, so you would have heard him talking the whole time. So that's why I allowed someone else to do that. Thank you. Uh, the. Uh, are you in favor or against? Aye. <laughs> Motion carries. Uh, what else, Diane? Okay. Um, what I do have is for 2020, I got a report from the third party uh, credit card company that people use to pay uh, taxes and utility bills. And I want to let you know, in 2020, we had 300 transactions for a total of 179,297.47. So every year, more and more people are using the credit card. Uh, I do believe a lot of it has to do with COVID at this point. That's why it's probably, you know, as high as it is. But it's just to let everybody know that it is working, is working well. Okay. Thanks, Diane. And that's all I've got. Thank you very much, Diane. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a new town center application. I just 
I sent out notice to the select board today and various other committees <clears throat> that the Newtown Center application uh, has been filed uh, with the state. The expected hearing date is February 21st. Uh, and I believe it's at one o'clock, but I need to confirm that. Uh, so the, it's been, I looked at our, on our calendars, it's, we st really started this formal process uh, in 2014. So it's been a, been a while and it's very, I think it's a very good application. I encourage everybody to, to go on and look at that application. It's also, Diane has put it on the town website. Uh, and so I'll be garnering um, support from the town on that hearing date. If there's any questions, I'll take the questions. Hearing none. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Uh, okay, development of Route 302, Town Fair Tire, the old um, steakhouse location. So I'm going to share my screen, Brad, here. So hold okay. on. At least I think I'm going to. We'll let you know when we can see it. Very good. So in our, in the Berlin zoning regulations, there's a, a provision I've had and I have it highlighted here. Oh, I have it highlighted here that any applications that front on Route 302 in the commercial district, which this application by a town fair tire does, uh, that they provide sidewalks. And you could see on, on section E, uh, the, the town of Berlin has the ability to require the property owner to be responsible for the maintenance of sidewalks, uh, irrespective of whether they are located within public right of way or not. And so uh, I've talked to the town fair folks and they have submitted for the town's review and approval an agreement to where they in effect will take care of the maintenance of that section of, of sidewalk on their property. Um, the, the development review board is meeting here on February 16th and um, I, I know this issue will come up with the DRB. Um, if I'm, and I'm making, making the assumption that the, the town of Berlin does not want to do uh, uh, snow maintenance, snow plowing and other maintenance on sidewalks at this time. And um, that if uh, to move this project forward then for town fair, I'm, uh, recommending that the uh, select board enter into this agreement with town fair to allow them to take care of the, the maintenance. I sent this to the select board in their packets earlier. Tom, I didn't see any, I, I, did, I, I guess I didn't, didn't get this one. There was a bunch of different information we received, but do we have, do we have requirements on what the maintenance of that would look like? said in anything anywhere i mean i mean what is the maintenance plan just in general we, we do not say that in our zoning regulations it could be uh, a condition of any permit that is granted um, and so just let me know if the select board has a desire to have any such condition of that permit include what the actual if it's a you know snowfall amounts or things like that yeah i just think the fact that they're going to maintain it is pretty vague without a standard to stick to well the drb would be open for it tonight when do when they uh the drb they would be the one that would probably want to make that recommendation wouldn't you think I think they'd really rely on the select board, to be honest with you. And it's 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 uh, something that I could find that um, see what other towns are doing that 
uh, have this. And I could send that to the select board for your review and uh, see if that's what you want to the permit, any permit condition to, to state. On this, Tom, our, um, the agreement um, for the town fair to uh, put in and maintain a, a sidewalk. Um, when does this need to be signed? Well, the, the DRB is meeting on February 16th, the first hearing. Um, this likely this project would take two hearings. It could be done as quickly as one, but I would think that it would take two hearings. Uh, so their, their second, their next hearing after the 16th of February will be March 2nd. So I would think by March 2nd, uh, this would be concluded. So if the hearing's the 16th, we have a meeting on the 14th. Correct. So we have a couple of weeks to get our ducks in a row and um, uh, you get the meeting on the, Yeah, the meeting on the 15th, Brad. The 15th. Um, yeah. We have a chance to get our ducks in a row and have a set of standards that yeah, the I, DRB can follow? I, I believe they would do that, yes. Okay, so um, I would say put this on the agenda for the 15th and we'll take in um, every, uh, the select board can get their comments into you and you can make a list of, uh, of uh, what we feel would be a uh, uh, acceptable maintenance package. And, and um, so look at it, look, look at through the, the window of if, if the town was doing the maintenance on it. So, uh, yeah, but I'll get that to you. Yeah. Anything else on this? No. Um, okay. Uh, I, just real quick, just with the maintenance, you said look at it from the town. Just, Tom, when you send what whatever it is you're going to send over to us, can you make sure it includes, I mean, fu like future deterioration or repairs and that? to some level yes thank you okay anything else on this uh if not green mountain power work in the town right of way project number 176237 i sent you in advance uh the working in a right of way with the green mountain power has uh sent out they have a, a power pool that they need to shore up and they um, and they've asking um permission of the select board to to work on that right of way it's near uh one three zero two chase road uh motion have a motion to, yeah motion to approve the the right of way work by green mountain power second any other discussion hearing none those in favor aye Aye. Okay, motion carries. Uh, Thank you. And Thank you, Tom. Uh, let's see here. Um, the town clerk mailing the ballots. Uh, Rosemary needs our uh, a vote on this. Yeah, in short, uh, the she sent out postcards to Berlin voters, and subsequent to that mailing, the school uh, supervisor union, two schools, two towns in that in supervisor union, voted to mail all residents ballots, um, and so the town clerks are being told by the secretary of state that. Every town needs, <clears throat> excuse me, needs the mail ballots. Rosemary doesn't have the 
right to do it at, to mail ballots to uh, all residents without select board approval. And so that's, she, she put this document together and is requesting that the select board approve it. I'd make the motion to approve. I mean, I've talked to Rosemary about this. She, they, we got 400 absentee requests and the, the school board's already sending out uh, ballots to everybody. And she, she feels like we might be able to get some reimbursement maybe from the school district if we mail them at the same time as well. Um, and ultimately, it doesn't make sense to mail them separately. Um, but... I would make the motion to approve that we allow the town clerk to mail ballots. I second that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Fisher Road, <laughs> Fisher Road Culvert Financing Town. So I, I still have not got uh, an answer from the state infrastructure bank on if we can submit an application for the Fisher Row financing because uh, the financing requires a positive vote at town meeting day from the, from the town residents. Uh, so, so we are moving along in the process. Uh, the, uh, Robert Clark with Otter Creek Engineering uh, believes that this week they'll finalize the design and I'll get that to the select board here um, prior to uh, the anticipation is prior to the next meeting so you'll see the, fi the final design on that the um, soon as the design is done uh, we will submit permits to the uh, agency of natural resources to allow us to work in the uh, wetland area the soonest that that can occur is May 15th, 2021. Uh, uh, Robert doesn't anticipate any uh, uh, issues in, in getting those permits. Uh, so it's just, I think the, the key thing here is, is uh, securing the financing. And, and that's what we're going to need the town vote on. Okay. Any questions for Tom on this? Hearing none, we'll move on to certificate of highway miles. So I sent this out. Um, you may recall last meeting we discussed about the Black Road section of um, maybe adding to this uh, class three roads. Just, uh, Justin, I had a several conversations and uh, we just believe that um, it can't be added this year. We need to, we need to follow up with some uh, uh, additional items to VTRANS. And I think that can be done. Brad, you may recall, we had a dis uh, conversation, Select Board had a conversation several meetings ago uh, about VTRANS wanting to, to um, the seasonal portion of Rowe Hill to make that, portion yep. of class four so we were looking at how to do that uh, it's, it's basically a, a public process and uh, i think it's best to when we do that process we we do the black road process simultaneously and then cure all those issues and get those submitted okay so so, so i would i would recommend that that the select board approve this certificate of highway mileage uh, here tonight. Tom, and Tom, does that certificate of highway mileage include or not include the section of Rowell Hill at this point? It it does include it. Okay. Um, and when is this? When are, when's the like drop dead due date on having to send this certificate in? I didn't get a chance to speak with the state yet. Um, it was my intention it's, to try to talk with her today, but because it was my understanding based on all the, you know, our conversation, it was my understanding prior that, you know, you could bring class four roads up to class three. Um, and you could also have sections of class three roads, according to the state statutes that you didn't necessarily do a hundred percent of winter, winter maintenance on. 
now being in a barricade, and maybe that's something different. But I was going to talk with a, I think it was Carrie, maybe at the state. Correct. So it's February twentieth. Justin is so. The, so is it possible? Community. Is it possible that we can just approve this, get a little bit more information, and approve this at the next meeting, and just make sure we have just so we, I mean, it's probably too late to to do many much for changes this year, but I, I, I don't know. I can't hear you, Justin. I just didn't know the if it was possible to wait or if it was going to be a tremendous burden to put it off for the next meeting until maybe we have all of that information. I don't think you're going to get anything by next meeting to change what what this form is. It's um, it's it, anyways, but you could. So you don't think the public hearings that we had would have satisfied it or anything in your hind in hindsight. The, but there's a provision, in the, and I shared it with you, that within 60 days of having those hearings, you, there needed to be a recording with the town clerk, and, and that did not occur. Right. So I, okay. So I don't, know, I don't know how you can get around that. So I, I'm just suggesting we, we, just, we just do the hearings again. It's, it's one-tenth of a mile. Uh, right. And, and we can inventory all of our other roads at the same time um, and make sure there aren't any other ones that are out there. Um, and it, it's minimal, but I just, out of principle, was thinking about it. But I'd, I'd make the motion to approve the highway mileage certificate for February 10th, 2021. And I second that. Any, for, <clears throat> any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, the town administrator hiring committee. So I sent out uh, earlier this evening uh, rec my recommendation on on the town administrator hiring. Um, and I. I have received uh, uh, Concentra Occupational Health has done a um, pre-employment physical on Mr. Conti, and he has he has passed that physical with no limitations to activities with respect to uh, the job duties. The um, I have talked to several of Mr. Conti's references that have given him glowing. Um, reports and on his management styles. Uh, the I received late this afternoon the background check um, from our third party uh, folks who do our background checks, DT Enterprises, I believe is the name of the company. And, and there are no red flags on that background check uh, that would preclude Mr. Conti's hiring. The, um, the only item that is missing is a, the results of a pre-employment drug screening. Um, Mr. Conti has um, has appeared for the drug screening and, and as the sample has taken, we just have not received the results. So I, I, my recommendation to the select board would, would be that uh, we, that you folks approve Mr. Conti for the town administrator's position contingent on uh, the, the satisfactory results of that drug screening. And that would be effective uh, hiring date of February fifteenth, two thousand and twenty-one. I'll I'll make the motion to hire Vince Conti for the position of Berlin Town Administrator with an effective date of February fifteenth, twenty twenty-one, contingent on its satisfactory pre-employment drug screening results. Second the motion. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor. Aye. John and Flo. I said aye. Hello? Aye. You didn't hear me. I said aye, but you folks didn't hear me. Thank you. Okay. Uh, motion carries. Um, moving on to liquor Congratulations. <laughs> Is he still with us? I don't think he don't is. Know. Yeah. He is. Congratulations, Thank you. Vince. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay. Uh, liquor licenses. 
uh, we have there's eight licenses that I sent you folks in advance, and it's they're detailed on your uh, yeah on your agenda. Um, these are these are all the standard liquor license. I mean, these guys get their they're nothing new. They're all the people that are constantly getting their liquor license, correct? Yeah, that's my understanding, Justin. Yes. Do you have to go? You have to go into their liquor board or something. I, I yeah. I'm not I'm not familiar with. I I don't I don't understand why we there's no appointments to a liquor board. I'm still not sure why we exit to a regular meeting to go to a liquor board that doesn't exist. The, I think it's, uh, I think the liquor board has to, or a liquor board has to approve the uh, licenses. I don't think. The select, doesn't the select board act as the liquor board if there's yes. not an appointed liquor board? So yeah. that's why we, the select board wouldn't have to go and leave and go into the liquor board. Yeah. Well, I don't think it really matters one way or the other. Just the uh, just to get the uh, uh, if you want to approve them, to get them approved. Just looking for the right document now, and I'll make the motion. I'd make the motion to approve the first and third class liquor license for the Wayside Restaurant, second class liquor license for Maplewood Limited, first class for GC Pizza Hut, second class for Jolly Associates, second class for Price Chopper Operating Company of Vermont, second <laughs> class for Thomas Farm and Garden, and second class for Kenny Drugs, number one. I second that. Thank you, Justin. You haven't heard any complaints from the chief about these? No. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Um, okay. And discussion of vast application to use town lands with possible select board action. John? So yeah, so I'll start. I, I said it in the beginning, but I'll say it again. After the public hearing, um, I didn't have a good recollection of what the next steps were. Um, and I thought that we should talk about it as a board and figure out. Uh, we, we got a lot of feedback during the meeting. Uh, there were a lot of people from both sides there. We went over Josh Walker's uh, 100 signatures uh, for or um, the, the vast trail of people that were in favor of it. And then we went over the survey results of that the um, conservation committee uh, uh, put out in, on front porch forum and got 59 people back for. So we went, up, we went through all of that and ended the meeting, but we never talked about what's next, right? So um, I don't know where people stand I, I was going to uh, suggest making a motion to have the conservation committee uh, work with the vast to mitigate concerns and have a draft of an updated management plan by June 1st for um, another public hearing for everyone to consider and to uh, talk about again at that point. But that would give us February, March, April, May, uh, you know, for four good months to talk about not only, you know, um, signage, noise, uh, you know, the, the road and, you know, how and if we can mitigate the road issues, um, the steep trail issue, which, you know, I recognize uh, it is a little bit more of an issue than it is in some other areas because, other areas such as in Northfield, um, you don't have as many walkers up there um, on some of those trails, but I think they can be mitigated. And I think, you know, if uh, the conservation committee, the select board and VAS work together that we can come up with a plan and do another public hearing at the beginning of June. Uh, that That's where I was thinking we'd head, but I, I'll, I'm open to any other, any other select board members thoughts and if anyone has any different ideas, I'm all for it. John, I'd, I'd chime in in saying that I, I heard a lot of concern 
thoughts um, around the shared use, um, the noise, and and just cutting in new trails on it, uh, you know. Uh, and I and I think that based on everything I've seen, you know, the shared use, I've I've just started actually using a snowmobile, and I was up on North Street, and I must have come into about seventy cross country skiers and sharing the trail, and and they also had a section of the, the trail that the cross country ski club was using their own snowmobile to groom a portion as well. So they could ride on the trail with the snowmobilers. I think sometimes there's some fear in the unknown. Um, and, and so I think a, a well-organized approach um, where we have clear direction and, and a plan in place on how we can proceed and, and mitigate a lot of these issues makes the most sense. Um, I do know the decibel levels and noise is another concern, but the reality is just like cars, snowmobiles have decibel limits um, and they're actually 10 decibels below what an automobile is for inspection. And, and I just think everything, everything that it's, we can mitigate through all of it. And if we can't, then, then we'll have to come to, we'll make a decision. But I, I really think, that in the interest of the people that want to coexist and utilize that trail uh, that also should potentially probably have the right to use it. We should develop a plan and move forward like you were saying. Well, and it's such a, it's such a great natural resource for us with the town that, you know, I think, you know, personally, I, I, I'd love to see people using it. Um, not everyone is going to use it the some, same way. Some people hunt on it. Some people use their uh, ATVs on it. Some people want a snow machine on it. Some people walk on it. Some people ski on it. Um, and I love it. I, you know, and I think everyone can coexist. I think there just needs to be rules. And I think there needs to be expectations set. And we should, you know, try to mitigate risk and public safety hazards and conservation hazards where we can. Um, but I think if we work on it for the next four months and we set a date, because if we don't set a date, we'll be another six months into this still kind of having the same discussion on, well, what's next? Um, that we can, we can actually, you know, figure out what we're going to do here. And I know that the vast trail uh, or the vast organization is willing to put in the bridge um, at the beginning of the, the trail um, this spring. So, you know, I, I'd like it all to fall in line. I don't want them to build a bridge and then, you know, have us say, yeah, well, we decided not to at the last second. Um, I'd like us to work somewhat on the same timeline. So, you know, VAST doesn't put in a bridge if we never intend on having them um, use, the, use the trails. I think that's fair. Um... You know, and one of the things I, I don't know who made the comment, I wanted to mention this too, and it, it kind of jumped out at me is I heard that people walk the mountain bike trails. And I mean, I, I granted it's, it's not necessarily a motorized sport, so it might be viewed differently depending on what your background is or, or what your hobbies are. But I mean, that's an example of just things that are already moving up there that are, that are fine together and, and they're known. So so that's a, that's a big piece of it. And I completely agree uh, with the bridge. And in fact, I, I feel that bridge, you know, with the safety concerns, with the width and the actual structure itself, I, I, I appreciate the fact that we may be able to find a, a kind of a public private partnership to help in, in times like this and help keep the cost lower. Brad, what are you, what are your thoughts? On um, on the trail or uh, on the uh, um, the bridge part of it? Whatever you want to talk about, Brad. The um, I do agree with the the uh, assessment that uh, it is public land, and the fact that uh, there is no taxes paid on it, and so everyone in town should have the right to use it. The, I understand the concerns of the people who are using it now and want to continue using it as it is. Um, 
I haven't walked those trails. I don't know just how steep the 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 part of the of the trail is at the, toward the top. I'm assuming that it uh, the hikers are able to to navigate it without any trouble. But then again, if it gets icy, sleds if they're properly studded, they won't bother. But then again, you can have some other troubles. Um, I right now would like to take and hear from the conservation committee uh, or a group or someone that can take and tell me just how many accidents there are on snowmobiles between skiers and snowmobiles on the uh, vast trails. I'm assuming that these trails are there. If they're policed, then there are probably records of that. And I just like to know what, what they are. Hey, Hey, Brad. Brad, I, I, I don't know if you had a chance to look yet, but um, there was an email that outlined some of those statistics that went to the select board. I believe it came in the middle of this, middle of last week, uh, maybe. It should be in your email. Yeah, it was sent to the Conservation Commission and the select board. Okay. So I think we get that. So, Brad, what I'm what I'm hearing from you is it, to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like it's almost the same thing, where you're not opposed to it, it necessarily. You know, you're in favor of due diligence, and um, that, you know, provided we can mitigate, go through any of these issues. Uh, Can't hear you, Justin. What I'm hearing you say, Brad, is that you don't disagree with the, the idea and that we should hear from the conservation and, and move forward in research uh, and making sure we can work through any potential issues that pop up, which, which I believe is essentially what John, John had brought up for a point to begin with. Am I correct? Pretty much. Any other comments? So you had a you had two two things there. The second thing was the bridge. Did you have different thoughts on the bridge? Well, on the bridge, if we can get the if uh, we go forward with the vast trail, I do feel that uh, the bridge should be improved simply because it needs to be improved for the for the snowmobiles. It doesn't need to be improved too much for the hikers. So I think that the vast should probably foot the bill on that one. However, if vast or if the if the vast trail is not put in, I do believe that the town needs to improve that bridge so that rescue vehicles or at least a, a side by side can get up there to rep for uh, for anybody who has an injury like there was this summer. So I I think the bridge would need to be improved to about the same quality either way. Um, either way. I would say less and, and yeah, yeah. Okay. But as 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 far as the hiking part of it goes, uh, I don't know who it was that that injured his knee up there, but you know it was. I think it was, I heard like three hours to get him down out of there, and I don't think that's quite acceptable. That was a huge red flag for me personally, safety wise. Thank goodness it was only a dislocated knee and not something. Obviously, it wasn't your knee. <laughs> you know what I mean. Come on now. <laughs> well, okay, anything else on this? Well, I'm, I'm, we haven't heard from Flo, so I'm just kind of... Okay, Flo? Thank you. I was just waiting. I started to speak a couple of times, but I wanted to make sure you all had a chance to get your views in. I agree with what you've all said. I'm on the fence right now. I'm not necessarily in favor it at this time. I think there's been a tremendous amount of opposition and I wanna look at that more heavily. At the same time, I'm not opposed to more research, but at this point in time, I think there's more opposition than there are people in favor. That's my take. Um, And at the same time, I'm not opposed to going forward, doing additional research, but right now I'm not totally in favor based on what I've heard both sides. Anything else on this? Hearing no more comments, we'll move on to minutes. 
Mr. Chair, I did not receive minutes. Well, in hold on. Can I, Justin, I thought we were. I thought John wanted to do an action item for me. Can't, can't hear you, Justin. Do we need to do an action item? Do we need to have an action item to do the research or, or to have set a timeline for um, when we'd like to, to have the uh, Conservation Commission have uh, the plan in place? Well, the Conservation Commission, they have to, uh, one of the things they need to do is, uh, is uh, see if they can uh, change their plan. I mean, with uh, the uh, land trust. Well, yeah. they, they've already mentioned that they can. So I, I would feel like it, we would want to have some model moving forward. I, if, if we just move along with this, we're not going to get the answers to the bridge uh, in the funding for that or any of these other items moving forward. So I feel as though the select board should request a timeline since we have heard from the conservation board that they can submit that to the land trust and that it shouldn't be an issue. Um, so I'd like to see, I mean, I'd like to see how, what that looks like because what, what I don't want to do is if for some reason we get in favor of, we decide to move forward as a board or the new board or whomever that will be. Um, I don't want to run into a situation where we don't, we don't have anything rolling forward and we, we just can't do it again because we were on our heels on this one. So. So I'll, I'll make a motion to direct the conservation committee to work with vast and the select board to mitigate concerns and have a draft of the updated management plan by June 1st, 2021. Wendy? That. Okay, further discussion, Wendy? Yeah, we, oh, we, oh, we wait, will wait, need wait, to talk wait, to wait, Vermont wait, Land wait. Trust because we independently cannot put together the management plan. There's, you know, there's certain criteria that we need to be following. Um, but yes, we can move ahead. This is what I wanted to do is sort of be able to have a list of concerns and a list of things we need to research and see where it goes from there. Um, you know, we have some environmental things that are mandated we need to look at. Um, you know, there, there's multiple things that need to be looked at. Um, I, I don't feel that this is a guarantee that it's gonna go through. Um, we really need to do the research and make a decision after we've done the research. John? Yeah, I, so we're in the middle of a motion, Brad. Yeah. The public, the public hearing was in the, or the public. Okay, I thought I was asked to speak, no, I'm no, sorry. It's it's fine, Wendy, Elin. I, I just wanted I'll to make mute. sure we, we don't go back to a, a full public hearing in the middle of a motion here. Um, no, but uh, a bit, uh, historically we have uh, taken, and under the, under the um, in the comment section or the, We've always allowed uh, people from the audience to speak. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, any other comments on this? Yeah, John. Did that motion include a time frame? Yeah, it was June first, twenty twenty-one. Just wanted to reiterate that. Thank you. No further comments. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, is the motion 4 0, Brad? What's that? Is the motion 4 0? Yeah. Four, yeah. Four zero. Okay. Um, well, I mean, realistically, there's, there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with having, uh, finding more information and having a discussion. Right, right. And that's 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 all I'm asking for is so we're all on the same page. So it's yep. documented that, you know, by June 1st, we'll come back and have another public hearing with the findings. Now, well, yeah. thank you. Yeah, to thank me, you. that's that makes um, that makes uh, the most sense. I was trying to think of when we should have a public hearing, but June 1st is as good as any day. Um, the rest of it, I mean, just the collecting of the information is, 
I think it's going to take a, a while, but that's just me. Okay, moving on to approval of licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I have that in front of me. I'll go ahead and do that sure. now. I make the motion that we approve payroll warrant 21-15 for payroll from January 3rd, 2021 to January 16th, 2021, paid on January 20th, 21, in the amount of $38,460.94. Also payable warrant 21G16 with checks 2869 through 2898 in the amount of $94,483.54. Also the December general journal entries. Thank you. Here a second. Second that. Any further comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, let's see here. Tom, you said there were no minutes. So uh, round table flow? No, not tonight, but thank you. Justin? Nothing tonight, thank you. John? Yes, sir. Um, so I, I think uh, Mr. Gentile took his name um, out of uh, consideration for the moment. Uh, I had a conversation with him on Friday, I believe. Um, and I, it, it was after, um, seeing the agenda for, uh, this meeting where we were reappointing, uh, in this case, it was Phil to the conservation board, which I have absolutely no problem with, but it occurred to me that, uh, we don't advertise those positions unless if someone just doesn't want to run again. And in, in my view, we should be, um, and, he, and this is the process that we used in Northfield, uh, and not that it's right, but this is what we did. Uh, we would put out and advertise that, you know, a one-year um, appointment to the Conservation Committee is open. Um, please send your letters of interest to the Conservation Committee at so-and-so address. The conservation committee would then make a recommendation to the select board and the select board would ceremonial, ceremoniously appoint someone. But at least that way it gets the advertisement out there and maybe, you know, maybe there's some new people in town. Maybe there's, you know, a, a, a new person that lives on Berlin Pond that's a forester or you just never know if you don't advertise and, and, and try to get new people on the board. So, um, and in this case, obviously nothing at all against Phil. Um, and uh, I hope he's reappointed. He does a great job. But I think that we ought to be advertising these openings and letting people know that, you know, there's there's openings in the town that they could, um, you know, show interest in if, if they'd like to and potentially be on one of these boards. Well, we're usually taking... Uh... Of course, this year is going to be different, but uh, usually at town meeting, we take and go through a list of uh, vacancies. No, and ask I, people, yeah, and we ask have, people. I get that, but usually, you know, at town meeting, there's, you know, 80, 80 to 100 people there. I think, I really think we ought to be advertising where we reach the full 2,800. Uh, people are busy, you know, not everyone is interested in, you know, um, maybe sitting through town meeting, maybe some people have to work, but maybe they're interested in the conservation committee or the planning commission. Um, okay. And I, I just think that, you know, if we, if we want really good quality boards, we should be advertising and, you know, trying to, you know, freshen our blood and get the, get the best people on the boards that we can. No different than the select board or anything else. We're all up for election every so often. Often and we, you know, it goes out to advertisement and we we run again if we want to or we say no and yeah, you know, <laughs> whatever. But um, anyways, that's the way we did at Northfield. And I, I just thought that, you know, maybe maybe it was a good way to approach things here in Berlin. John, well, uh, go ahead, Brad. Sorry. Well, the, the only thing I was thinking is that uh, I got We'll have to take talk to Rosemary, but if we could take and put uh, a list of uh, openings in the uh, ballots, if she's sending those out to every all the uh, registered voters in town, 
And I, I would think with Corinne's emails that she sends out along with Front Porch Forum that, that we would be able to get that out there. One of the follow up with John's statement, I think that's a great idea to, to get fresh life, new energy. That always helps. Um, do I mean, I don't even know the is there is there a set number of members that can be on any of these the conservation committee or any of that? Because from well, what I understood, that there's been various amounts of different members, and and to me that's also confusing. But yeah, I think well, it I think it depends on the board or commission. And Brad, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but um, uh, Phil was going to do some research into the conservation committee and uh, hopefully get us an answer in the next week or so as far as what the number is. If we can't find it, um, the conservation Conservation Board is going to be a recommendation to the select board as far as what the number should be. Well, the, the, um, I'm trying to think, the Zoning Commission. Five. At one, at one time they had five, but at one time yeah. I think they had seven. At one time the Planning Commission had seven. They couldn't fill the quorum and they took that down to five. Yeah. Right now, the Development Review Board is five. The um, Public Work Board is, is five as well. What's good about the Development Review Board, they have the ability to, to use alternates. Um, uh, the, the Planning Commission is not allowed, I think it's by charter, not allowed to, to use alternates. And uh, the Public Work Board, I believe, is under the same scenario that, that they can't use alternates. There are openings on all three of those boards. Um, I think what's what what it's really from from a staff standpoint is having one person in charge of doing that. And I would suggest that if with the new hours to the assistant town clerk, she's that maybe the select board ask if she could do this task, and because that's what ends up slipping through the crack the cracks. Okay. Um, anything else on your roundtable, John? No, just 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 so we're all on the same page, though. Our our what do we want to do? Because I don't want to leave um, a conservation committee member out there that wants to serve out in the wind, uh, not knowing what our next steps are. Our, do we want to start advertising for each position, even if it's up for reappointment? For you know a two week period, and at the end, or do you want to work on this over the you know next two weeks with, or in the course of February, and have our uh, new town administrator take this on and develop a process for us to look at? Like, how would you? What what's the board's wishes here? The um. So there's, how many are on the on the conservation committee? Five? I believe it. We don't I believe it's five. Well, I believe it's five. Yeah. And uh, I'm sorry, we have five five people. Yeah. Well, I mean, if we're going to advertise for the commissions, I don't see any problem with that as long as we advertise for all of them. Great. They all they all need uh, they all need more members or alternates. Agreed. And then the, the process would be that that in in the case of the conservation committee, they would review the applicants and bring a recommendation to the select board for select board approval. It uh, it probably should be for any of the committees for the existing members to take and uh, review them. I have no problem with that. Well, I, I'm not sure of the wisdom of that because you, if you've got a full board, um, of course, they can always up their numbers to, to seven. They can come before the select board and ask to have their numbers raised. I don't see anything wrong with that. So that way they're, uh, right. Wendy, I mean, you know that 
not everybody can get to the meeting at the same time. I mean, there's always conflicts. I, I guess I would go for, you know, we've got a management plan to write, which is a very labor intensive activity. We've got the research now to do on the vast trail, which is going to be another labor intensive activity. We have Phil, who's an experienced um, person on the committee. He's part of our historical um, knowledge of the committee. You know, he and Tom, Tom's the most longest standing member. Phil is the second longest standing member. Um, he's currently our chair. Um, and now we've got, you know, two big projects coming up besides normal things that we need to do. And in the past month, I have attempted to recruit three people onto the committee to get extra people. And all of them, although they've been interested, they, you know, they've expressed interest in the activity, they express interest in the forest, they don't have time to take this on. And my thought is if anybody is willing and able to do this, um, we as a committee welcome them. Um, you know, especially an existing member with experience. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is this makes sense to me. Um, your, you would recommend appointing Phil back to the board, and in the meantime, we could also advertise for openings. And and should should any anybody come to that board that's willing to put in the time and the energy, you would you would recommend most likely, obviously, you can't guarantee anything, but you would recommend that they would also be able to be a member of that board and you'd expand to get the maximum involvement that you could? Yes. I mean, we, we need people. Um, and it is, like I said, I've tried to recruit three people in the last month unsuccessfully um, with good experience and good backgrounds. And Phil has a lot of... Um, experience with this committee that we need um you know so to put any anything in the path of him not being back on the committee is a mistake that that, that is not and, and just to be very very clear that is not the intention whatsoever and i'm i'm happy to reappoint him immediately if that's if that's what's you know if that's, that's what we want the to desire do. of the committee my my point was that how do you get new fresh blood if you don't advertise the positions when they come up for reappointment? Advertise. We would like more people. Yeah. That's what I'm. That's that's why I'm. That's why we're having this discussion. As I said so, in the beginning, it has absolutely nothing to do with Phil. So in the in the process of doing this, John, couldn't you? Couldn't the board? Wouldn't you think? Wouldn't the board be able to receive? applicants or letters of interest um so to help determine whether or not the, the select board felt as though maybe they should go from five members to seven members and i mean obviously in in conjunction but that way you would also um, eliminate that potential for kind of old blood so to speak on the board and, and get fresh new energy in there sometimes we have three new members currently so we don't Excellent. really have an issue with having the old blood. We have an issue well, with not having enough experience. I didn't mean it like that, but if it got to be a stagnant environment or or what, I'm just it's not not implying that that's the case there at all in any way, shape, or form. Just like I think Phil's done a fantastic job, and everybody does a fantastic job on there. It was more if I think you know Brad was saying if you know when you think about it, if there's five members and and they're the ones that bring the recommendations. Sometimes there could be a bias or unknowingly or just a comfort or, well, maybe you wouldn't take that person on because this person's got a, a, a bunch more experience in the town or in that area. So I, that was my only point was that I think it would be, I think it's great. And I think that if, if it letters of interest came to the, the select board and, and we thought there was a tremendous amount of qualified people and not enough positions on a board, then, then we would be able to make a recommendation to these other boards that they maybe change from a five member board to a seven member board or something along those lines based on the amount of enthusiasm or uh, 
willingness of, of the community to be engaged in that board because we all know the more people, like you said, to handle these tough tasks, the better. That's all I was getting at. And this this is very this has very little to do with the, the conservation committee specifically. This has to do with overall how are we making appointments. So if, if we had a five member board and we just reappointed if you wanted to stay on those five members could be on for 50 years and never get off and no one would ever have a chance to get on as a new member. That's what I was trying it's to point out. It's not an issue. It's not an issue. <laughs> not, no. when, it's a I lot of work. Wendy Lynn, you, you got to get paid. You gotta, it's yeah, not you, an issue. Again, you got to look at it beside bigger than just the conservation committee. I realize that's the board you care about specifically, but we're trying to look at this holistically across all of our committees. And I think all I of them need the more bill. members. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Everybody from all the right. conservation committee to the DRB. <laughs> good luck. Good luck with a good, good luck with a quorum, though. If you if your group gets too big as with named members, but yeah. we'll take your recommendation on whatever number you want to well, give us. Well, we don't vote, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything so you're else? Not a real this? committee. Yeah. Right. Anything else so on this John? But yeah, so I, I want to drill on this. So you, what you're saying is you're not a real committee. No, I'm saying we don't have the same voting power that the select board has. We're an advisory committee. Um, we don't vote. Do you, do you hold public meetings? We're advisory. You, so you we don't, don't hold public We don't need a quorum meetings. to vote. We don't vote. All right. So we don't really need to appoint anyone. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Uh, I have nothing. So, Tom, is there executive session tonight? No, sir. Okay. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Flo, was that an aye? Yes. You have three eyes there, Mr. Chairman. We are adjourned. <laughs>